Yo, what is going on, everybody? This is Stretches on Fire, and I am bringing you back some more content for Warhammer Chaos and Conquest. That's right. Uh, so this video, I'm pretty much going to be covering wars, and I'm going to be covering how to develop more power for your for your character, pretty much. Uh, I want your keep to be a lot higher level, and you need to have a lot of true power, so we're going to cover a little bit on those as well. But starting off with wars, how to properly do it, I mean, the best, there's always a different strategy. Everybody has their own specific ways. Personally, for me, on this alliance itself, we actually went to a war two days ago with our uh, rival alliance, BLL, which is, uh, I'll show you real quick on the leaderboards. They were at 85 million power, and we dropped them down a whole entire 20 mil almost, well, 22 million uh, power off, their, off the leaderboard. So the best approach I found to working best in this game would probably be tactics on the packs and if you guys go into your alliance real quick you can check real quick right here if you click on pa alliance and then you can go to packs uh, if you have a pack with another alliance all that means is that you're friendly you're not just going to attack them you guys are working for the same goal and that's to conquer cities and rule the server uh, the best packs you can possibly get are definitely going to be the higher level packs. And if you're one of those alliances that have a lot of power, your main focus should be the top 10 packs. Honestly, the top 10 packs are going to be the ones that are going to assist you in the long haul. And they're going to be the ones that help you out whenever a lot of stuff starts tumbling down the hill. Uh, with us, we have Dro on here and Ironborn. We just got German Force on here, Legion Espana. And uh, AKR and Annihilators. I mean, these are all really great alliances. They're packed with us right now. As of two days ago, Dro, IBN, and AKR all came to our aid in fighting off and searching for the hives of these three major alliances that we uh, had a rival with. One of them actually was our sister line, so kind of uh, really pissed us off in the wrong way. But by doing that, we spent like good 16 hours, and that's just 16 hours scattered between all the time zones. So between me personally, I think I, uh, I roughly warred for about four hours that night. And a lot of my alliance members were warring for about eight hours until a lot of them passed out. But then we had our European servers, or our European time zone players jump online and uh, carry out on the attacks. It really helps out to have them with you. I mean, we barely lost any power out of that battle. We went from 106 million to 104. And we, we dropped over, ugh, I don't know, 30 million power between two, two alliances alone. And this is just, what, nine days into the game for this server? I mean, that's a really good, really good jump on enemies, and it's the best, best way to do it. Jump into a Discord, coordinate your plans and strategies together, and then, and then this take that chance, you know. Uh, next thing, like I said, I was going to cover. I was going to cover a little bit more on the power and how to get everything up a little bit faster. Plan ahead. That should be your number one rule in this fucking in this game. It's planning ahead. You want to make sure that you're always ahead of the ahead of the game, ahead of the players and the other alliances. And the best way to plan ahead is working on those events. For example, in nine hours, five minutes, training unit event will kick in. So what I normally would do is I'll set my units if their training time is more than nine hours. I'll set it right at nine hours and thirty-three min or thirty-five minutes, and then I will set an alarm for that time. If you're that serious about the game, setting alarms is really pretty. It's a really helpful thing to do. But uh, if you do that, then by the time that that event starts, you've already produced all those troops, and that builds you up in the ranking. And then you can get yourself a thousand orb stones for being rank one. Uh, but doing that it really helps you out a lot. Usually do that if you're going to sleep. It's the best way to do it. But uh, the main focus is set a goal for yourself. Go in and figure out what you want to do and make your to prefer tactics on your end. For example, I'm going as more of a defensive approach. But I'm working with more of my corn and my monsters troops. So that way, whenever I do get attacked, a lot of my buffs are focused on those. And when I produce those troops, the buffs apply to it. And I'll suffer less losses. Let's see if I have anything in here from the other night, if I can. 
Uh, everything's already gone. Darn it. Well, that's that. I mean, if you really want to gain power really, really quick, level up one thing out of the boot, the bunch. For example, I'm saying when I say level one thing, here's a sawbone. But, no, nah, that's a bad example. Let's go with one of these. I have slaughter pens down here. I don't recommend bringing everything up to around seven, keep it around eight maybe, and just level one of them up the most. Uh, that way you can level up your keep faster, and that way you can level up uh, resource or researches faster, right? Like giants, cannons, whatever you want to do. Those that's the best way of doing it and leveling up your power because resources aren't really that hard to get. All you really have to do is go out into the map, look up a resource, find the area that has really high, for example, like a level five iron vein. This one, of course, has been depleted a little bit already, but if you can find fives and sixes, you'll find at least one mil resources on each one of those. And then you can send your army out, collect resources, bring them back, and then start upgrading and researching more things. But focus more on your speeds, construction speeds, troop speeds, troop costs, whatever it is that you're aiming to do, and that way you can re uh, your, your power level will go up a little bit quicker. Um... Tier 3 troops are literally like, if you're new and into the server, tier 3 troops are your, your must-haves. If you can get a tier 3 troop while everybody's still stuck on their tier 2s, those guys are going to demolish armies for you. They're going to take out troops, they're going to take out armies, it's just a done game. But you're going to always have those power players, so in that instance you're going to want to make sure that you guys are all online, at least a good 10 of you, and you guys can coordinate attacks all at the same time. And wipe out the power players right off the bat so they don't have any way of reinforcing their friends or even attacking you and depleting you of your own resources if you send your army out. Uh, I am going to cut it off at that part right there though. Uh, thanks for uh, watching this video. I will upload more content later. I have submitted to become a, a content creator for either YouTube or my Twitch account. I do t post on my Twitch. Just look up the gamer tag as well. Stretches out fire. I'll be on there sometimes. If you see me in there, stop by, say hello. And, uh, yeah, I'll leave out that. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and uh, have a good night.